and all the panelists. That was a very insightful discussion. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the most awaited session of the evening. Someone who needs no introduction, the minister who has completely transformed India's power and renewable energy space from the time he took charge of the ministry in 2017. Betting big on the reforms in the power sector, he has focused on adopting advanced technologies and brought changes in the operational procedures of the regulatory authorities. In order to secure our energy future under his able leadership, India is constructing a significant 132 gigawatt of electricity capacity with a projection to add 517 gigawatt by 2031-32. In the renewable energy space, India has already added a total of 72 gigawatt solar power capacity so far because a transition to clean energy is about making an investment in our future. Please welcome none other than the Minister of Power and Renewable Energy, Mr. R. K. Singh, for his address. Friends, ladies and gentlemen. What I will cover for you is what we have done, what more needs to be done, how I look at the future, how I feel we as a country need to prepare for the future. And uh, the challenges that face us, the opportunities uh, before us, and how I propose to actually take advantage of the opportunities and prepare for the future. Now, if you want, if you ask me as to what is the one distinctive feature which separates a developing country from a developed country, I'll tell you that the one major distinguishing feature is this, that in a developed country you don't have load shedding. The power does not go up. No country can develop, no country can industrialize if it does not have sufficient power because it's electricity which powers the industry, which it's electricity which powers everything. No development is possible without electricity. All infrastructure is necessary, all infrastructure is important, but I believe, and I don't think it's a biased view, I believe that uh, Electricity, the power, is the most important infrastructure, which is a sine qua non for development. Now, when our government came to office, uh, you had a power shortage, which ranged from 10 percent to 4.5 percent. In, in about 12, 13, the shortage w was in the region of 10, 11, 12 percent, came down to about 4.5 percent in 2014. Today, the shortage has been wiped out. 0.1% uh, to 0.2%, something like that. Uh, we have also uh, emerged as a country which is at the forefront of energy transition. Simultaneously, we've done both. We've also emerged as a country which has ensured universal access. And universal, ensuring universal access was, was a huge, huge task. You had to connect 29 million homes. We connected 29 million homes. And we connected 29 million homes in 19 months in what the International Energy Agency called the largest and the fastest expansion of access ever in the history of the power sector. Now, what happened was that we added about 194,000 megawatts of power generation capacity. 
uh, out of which about 107,000 megawatts is renewable. That's what happened. Uh, what happened was that we constructed uh, transmission lines, 193,000 circuit kilometers of transmission lines, and all this is in the past seven, eight years, transmission lines, uh, which connected the whole country into one grid running on one frequency, making this the largest single integrated grid in the world. Uh, we increased the transfer capacity from 36,000 megawatts to 117,000 megawatts today. I mean, that, that, I think, is about four times, five times. That's what we did. What we did was that we added 3,000 substations. We upgraded 4,000 substations. Uh, we added almost about five and a half lakh circuit kilometers of LT lines, uh, two and a half lakh circuit kilometers of HT lines, about 7.5 lakh transformers, and uh, sundry other equipment. That's what we did. So th as a result of all this, because we Added the, added the generation capacity because we increased the transmission capacity and that because we strengthened the distribution systems. We were able to bring up the availability of power in rural areas uh, from over 12.5 hours in uh, 12 and a half hours in uh, uh, 2015 to about 21 hours to 22 hours today. Last year it was 22 hours, now it has dipped a bit, it's gone down to 21 hours. That's the average, the national average in rural areas. In urban areas, it's 23.8 hours. Uh, the, the generator is fast, it's disappearing. You don't see generators anymore. Uh, that the, the, the days of the generator are gone. Uh, we have made 24 by 7 into a right. We have promulgated rules which says that no distribution company can do gratuitous load shedding. That means load shedding without any technical fault or whatever, uh, just for want of electricity. If you do that, you have to pay compensation to your consumer. And uh, we uh, you know, the, and we've also put in place mechanisms for oversight. So we have a couple of inquiries going on. And any discom which does gratuitous load shedding, that gets uh, that will get penalized. The consumers will get uh, a compensation. What we also ensured was that at the same time, uh, we emerge as a leader in energy transition. Uh, our rate of capacity addition of renewable energy capacity has been one of the fastest in the world in the past five, six years. Uh, even, uh, you know, the, uh, I think to leave out China, I, I don't think no other country would match us in the rate of capacity addition. Today, I have 180,000 megawatts of renewable energy capacity. Uh, we had pledged that by 2030 we'll have 40% of our capacity coming from non-fossils. Today our non-fossil capacity is 4-4%. That means we are way beyond the target and it's still seven years to go. So we have upped our ambition by 2030. Uh, we'll have 50% of our capacity coming from non-fossils. Actually, we shall, this is what we have pledged. Actually, we shall have 65% of our capacity coming from non-fossils. Now, because of... Uh, the, uh, the fact that we called money control, I'll tell you the monetary side of it. Uh, the total investments which we have made is about uh, 17 lakh crores. And the capacities under construction are a further 17 and a half lakh crores. That's the investments which we have brought in and the investments which are going on. <coughs> we are adding about, uh, uh, this is the capacity which I already constructed. We are adding about 99,000 megawatts of renewable energy capacity. That's under construction. We have uh, under construction about 27,000 megawatts of thermal capacity. 12, in addition, we have bid out 12,000 megawatts more of thermal capacity. I have a further 21,000 megawatts of thermal capacity under survey and investigation, and a further about 22,000 megawatts under initial stages. We have identified the land, etc. So 80,000 megawatts, actually 87,000 megawatts of thermal capacity we are adding. 99,000 megawatts is under construction. I have another 30, oh, that's uh, non-fossil. And I have another about 32,000 megawatts under bid. That's renewable energy. And renewable energy, we shall be bidding out almost 40, 50,000 megawatts every year. That's, uh, that's the rate of growth which uh, we plan, which we are doing. Uh, by hydro capacity, when I joined, the hydro, cap hydro capacity was in doldrums. The hydro sector was in doldrums. It was moribund, as you would call it. Uh, in coma, as you call it, I mean, no, no growth. We started it, uh, we restarted it. And now I have 86, uh, I have 46,900 or 47,000 megawatts installed. 
and another 18,000 megawatts of hydro under construction and 13,000 megawatts under various survey and investigation. This 46,000 megawatts I am going to double. And so I will make it about 92,000, 100,000 megawatts of hydro capacity. Of hydro capacity. Everything I am going to double, triple. Each of my companies is actually doubling in size or tripling, uh, tripling in size. That's what we have done. I mean, uh, we have transformed the power sector. And that was necessary. It was very necessary because if we had not done that, we would have been like Sri Lanka. We have not only transformed it, we have made it, we have, we have not only increased the size, we have made it viable. The AT&C losses have been brought down by 12 percent from 27 percent to 15.41 percent. And that I am not happy with. I want to bring it down to 10, 12 percent. We had a meeting of all the states today and uh, we'll continue the meeting tomorrow. And this is what I have said, that these uh, AT&C losses will have to come down further to about 12 percent. Nobody could have imagined that to be possible. Nobody thought that this could be done. Why? Because we are a democracy. Why? Because, uh, you know, the, we are a federal system and because electricity is in the concurrent list. Now, despite all that, we've done it. Uh, we've, uh, the fact that the people didn't understand what concurrent list meant. Now, concurrent list doesn't mean that, you know, the state and the center have equal powers. State has predominant powers. If I make a law, that prevails. If, a, if the state government wants to make a law, they can do so. But if they, on any point their law uh, conflicts with my law, with the central government's law, to that extent their state law is invalid. If we make a rule, that applies throughout the uh, country. So we are making rules and we are making sure that people follow them. And I have made it very clear that anybody who violates the rules, whether it pertains to uh, you know, availability or whether it pertains to f fair tariffs, etc., they will be prosecuted. And I don't have any hesitation, I mean, that everybody understands that I don't have any hesitation in taking action where action is warranted. So things are happening. Now, uh, why this was necessary, why this was timely, is that just one figure will tell you this. Uh, in uh, 2014, the peak demand was in the region of about 130, 131,000 megawatts. Today, the peak demand is in the region of 243,000 megawatts. Now, that's the increase in demand which has happened. It's gone up by 80 percent. Now, imagine if we had not added the capacity. Imagine that. In between, I also felt that probably I'm adding too much. But, you know, we had exports. We, we, are, export, we are exporting to Bangladesh, uh, Nepal, etc. But, I mean, whatever capacity I added has been lapped up, and now I'm having to add more capacity at a rapid pace. Now, this is great news because this means that our economy is growing rapidly. One reason why, of course, the demand increased was because we connected 29 million homes. And, you know, the, uh, I go around in my constituency. <coughs> um, I contest elections. I won uh, twice, the second time with uh, enhanced margin. A third time, I'll win with a more, <laughs> with higher margin, I'll tell you that. But I see that even in poor homes, now you see television sets. Now you see refrigerators. When I first used to start going around my constituency, I was offered tea. And, you know, the, if, you're, uh, if you have a constituency, you can't refuse any offer of tea or sweets or whatever, wherever. Uh, so now I also am offered cold drinks. I also see air conditioners at home in the villages. Mind you, in the villages. In towns, one could see that. And in the villages of Bihar, now you see air conditioners. So that's one of the reasons why the demand is galloping. And the demand is galloping. As I said, 80 percent increase, 130 gigawatts to 243 gigawatts. And by 2030, uh, my uh, officers tell me that the demand will be 366,000 megawatts. Now, that I believe is, is an underestimate. I, I think that the demand is likely to be about 400,000 megawatts. We are the uh, fastest growing large economy. And if, if any thermometer were to be an indicator of this, this Electricity is the thermometer. If your demand, if the power demand is growing at that speed, that means your country is growing, and our country is growing. And it will continue to grow at this rate for the next three decades. So imagine uh, the, uh, you know, the huge, huge burden which is there on me to make sure that I add enough capacity to meet that demand. And that we shall. We shall add that capacity. And, you know, the uh, huge. As I said, adding about 193,000 circuit kilometers, and I'm having, I'm having to add uh, capacity, transmission capacity, you know, every month I approve thousands of new circuit kilometers of transmission capacity because I am running out of connectivity. Uh, we had said that we'll have 500 
thousand megawatts of renewables by 2030, I think we'll cross that. Because, you know, for uh, one million tons of hydrogen, you need 25,000 megawatts of renewable energy. And I already have seven million tons of green hydrogen manufacturing lined up. Incidentally, we are emerging as one of the biggest manufacturers of green hydrogen and green ammonia in the world. And we are the most competitive because my cost of making renewable energy is the cheapest in the world. I, you know, my, one megawatt of renewable energy for me, solar energy, is $600,000. That's uh, cheaper than anywhere else. So nobody can compete with me. Despite the fact that, you know, developed countries are, are adopting, uh, you know, protectionist measures, which they used to rail against, despite that, I am still competitive. You know, one country is giving a subsidy of $3 per kilogram of green hydrogen, $3. Now, that's the price of making a kilogram of green hydrogen. That's what they are giving a subsidy. They are giving us a, a, a huge subsidy on the entire uh, sort of, uh, you know, value chain of renewables. But still, we shall be competitive. And not, not only that, not only that we are adding capacity, we are sort of, uh, as I said, changing, transforming large quantities of renewables, green corridors, the quantum of uh, storage, which we are adding again, uh, I think, uh, is something which is... Uh, going to lead to sort of wide eyes because now more and more bids are around the clock renewable energy, more and more bids are dispatch for dispatching renewable energy, which requires solar wind hybrid with storage. I have about 35,000 megawatts of uh, uh, pumped storage lined up under various clearances, etc. About 3,000 already constructed, about 3 4,000 under construction. Uh, battery storage. Uh, very expensive. Why? Because the West, uh, you know, they, talk, uh, they kept talking about how it necessary it was to fight global warming and how everybody needs to take steps. They uh, actually took no steps and therefore did not construct storage capacity. Whatever storage capacity is there, uh, the, you know, about 90 percent or 95 percent is in China. The West, no storage capacity under construction. So we are constructing storage capacity, battery storage. Very expensive. Right now it's 10 rupees per kilowatt hour. You, for making one uh, unit of uh, uh, solar, two rupees fifty paise. For storing it for one hour, ten rupees. That's the price. So the, unless and until you have volumes, the price won't come down. But I'm bringing down the volumes. We are leading. We are leading the change. We are the, the lowest emitters in the world. Our uh, per capita emissions are one third of the global average. And yet, we are the only country which has met both its indices. And before time, we had pledged that we'll reduce our emissions intensity by thirty three percent. Uh, by 2030, we achieved that in 2019. We have some programs of, of energy efficiency which are world leaders. A performance you've created program for industry is a world leading program where we set targets for specific energy consumption and specific emissions for industries. And if any industry overachieves that, they get energy saving certificates. Now that will be translated into carbon credits. And if they underachieve, they either buy energy saving certificates or the penalty. Now, that has resulted in a reduction of, C, reduction of CO2 emissions, mind you, on a per annum basis of about 107 million tons per annum. Just one program. Our LED program has resulted in an emissions reduction of 113 million tons of CO2 per annum. That's the quantum of CO2 emissions reduced by another program. Our star rating of appliances, in the five star, four star, that's our program. Five star ACs and all that. That's our program. And uh, resulted in reduction of CO2 emissions of 57 million tons per annum. We have a program of uh, uh, energy efficiency for construction. The Eco Nivas Sanheta for uh, uh, residential buildings and ECBC for commercial buildings. So the entire gamut of uh, emissions reduction we've carried out, uh, achieved our target, what, 11 years in advance? for emissions reduction, achieved our target of renewable energy capacity addition nine years in advance. We'll achieve the next NDC also well in advance. So that's what we are. We are growing rapidly. We are different. And, you know, the rules and regulations, you know, the lady announced me, and they mentioned the rules and regulations. We've changed it. We've made it totally uh, business friendly, eco friendly. I mean, for example, you take transmission. I've introduced the general network access. Now, this is not there even in the United States or anywhere else. And here, you apply for uh, connectivity, you will get it. Just, you know, allotment will happen straight away, and initially you would have got it within about 30 days. Now, uh, because of so much of capacity coming, so therefore it will take you maybe three months, four months, but you will get it. 
and you get connected at one point, you are connected to the whole country. And they connect to the nearest ISTS node, maybe 20 kilometers or so away or something, and you get connected to the whole country. Today you sell to uh, Guwahati, tomorrow you buy from Mumbai, uh, day after tomorrow you sell to Baroda or whatever. You can generate anywhere, sell anywhere. The, uh, we, we have provided enough transmission capacity. Uh, I mean, buy anywhere, sell anywhere, generate anywhere, it's one country. That's what uh, we have done. No other country has this, uh, the, you know, this general network access. And the, that connectivity part also I have de-licensed. You don't need a transmission license to get connected to the general, uh, to the ISTS. You just get, if it's within uh, 20, 25 kilos, just get connected. You don't need a license. Uh, I mean, everything we've made easy. Green open access. Uh, we, we have uh, promulgated rules which say that you can set up capacity anywhere in the country. And we'll give you free transmission to wherever your factory is. Just set it up. Open access. Open access rules I have brought out which guarantees that you will get open access that within 15 days. That means it is not incumbent upon you to buy electricity only from your distribution company. No, you can buy it from anybody you want throughout the country. We, are bring, we have come out with bids for offshore wind. We have transformed the sector. Uh, we are different. Uh, we are, uh, uh, con you know, and all this capacity, I haven't had to put in money. You know, all this huge capacity, uh, you know, I get investments. One bid, you know, then you have seven, ten companies competing. That's why where we are at. Every major fund is invested here. And, uh, you know, the, we'll, we'll continue to be one of the fastest growing capacities in the world. Why? Because, I mean, we are huge and we are growing. And no other country is growing as rapidly as us. That's the opportunity before us. And uh, we will double, we'll triple. As I said, I think my demand is going to double by about 2030 and we'll triple again in seven years after that. No other huge country is going to double in which, uh, or triple. Other large economies are growing at 2%, 2.5%. I am growing at 7.5%. And I'll continue growing at 7.5%. And in, power, in the power case, uh, in the case of power, I grew at 9% last year. This year, I'm growing at 10%. For in three, for three months, I grew at 20%. On a daily basis, my demand is 8,000 to 10,000 more, megawatts more than the previous year, the uh, same day. Uh, so, and this is the rate at which I'll continue growing. So no other, there, there's no other market as big as us, and there's no other market is growing as fast as us, and there's no other market which, is, uh, which has so much ease of doing business as we've provided. So we are different. Uh, we are uh, sort of going places. Be with us, you'll grow. All my companies have grown three times, four times. I mean, the, by one of my companies, the NTPC has tripled in value. Its share prices have gone up three times. One of the, um, other of my, another company of mine, I mean, the share prices have gone up two and a half times. Power, power, PGCIL, Power Grid, etc. REC has gone up all three and a half, four times. And that, that's the share price. PFC, you know, the share prices have gone up four times, five times. If you haven't, if you had, haven't invested, you missed out. Huh? But there you are. So that's money control. So I'll be there. Ask anything you want. Thank you.